18 of Works of Solace. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Anne Boulay. Works of Gaius Celestius Crispus. Translated by Alfred W. Pollard. Ugurthine War, Part 9. On learning of the alliance between the kings, the general no longer offered battle rashly, or, as after his many defeats of Jugurtha, he had been wont to in every position. He awaited the two kings in a fortified camp not far from Cirta, thinking it would be better to fight at his convenience after learning the quality of the Mauritanians, since they had joined in the war as a new enemy meanwhile he was informed by dispatches from rome that his province had been assigned to marius the news of whose election to the consulship he had received previously these events affected him more than was either right or honourable he could neither restrain his tears nor govern his tongue though distinguished in other accomplishments he bore vexation in too womanish a manner some construed his behaviour as a mark of pride others as the outcome of a noble spirit inflamed by insult many again as caused by the feeling that the victory he had practically won was being wrested from his hands for myself i am assured that it was rather the honour conferred upon marius than his own wrongs which tormented him and that he would have borne the blow more equitably if the province of which he was deprived had been assigned to any other than marius burdened by this grief and thinking it foolish to charge himself with another man's work to his own peril metellus sent ambassadors to bocchus to desire him not to become an enemy to the roman people without a cause they were to urge that the king had at this time an opportunity of cementing a friendship and alliance that this was far preferable to war and that despite his confidence in his resources it was unwise to exchange the certain for the doubtful every war was easy to enter on most difficult to abandon to begin and to end it were not in the power of the same person even a coward might do the first the time for the second was fixed by the victor's will bocchus therefore should take thought for himself and his kingdom and should be careful not to involve his own prosperity in the ruined fortunes of jugurtha to this message the king returned a conciliatory answer to the effect that he was desirous of peace but pitied the misfortunes of jugurtha if the same opportunity were given to the latter a treaty was assured the general sent fresh messengers in reply to the proposals of bocchus who accepted some of his terms and declined others in this manner the time passed in the frequent interchange of messages and the war as metellus wished was prolonged without activity on either side as i narrated above marius to the great delight of the commons had been elected consul previously hostile to the nobility after his appointment by the people to the province of numidia he attacked them with even greater vigour and spirit railing now at individuals and now at the whole body boasting that he had won the consulship as his spoil after their defeat and in other ways exalting himself and annoying them meanwhile he attached most importance to the necessary provision for the war demanded that the strength of his legions should be raised and summon reinforcements from the tributary peoples and kings and from the allies he invited moreover all the bravest men from latium with most of whom he had been acquainted in the field while a few he knew by report his solicitations also constrained veterans who had served their time to set out under his command the senate though hostile to him did not dare to deny him on any point the reinforcements it had voted with actual pleasure under the idea that military service was distasteful to the commons and that marius would either lose the requisites of war or the favour of the crowd this hope however was vain so great a desire for accompanying marius had seized men's minds every one thought that he would be enriched with booty and return home victorious and pondered over other like ideas in his mind they had been moreover not a little excited by a speech of marius who after all his demands had been voted and his desire was now to enlist soldiers summoned a meeting of the people in order to encourage them and at the same time to indulge in his usual invective against the nobility his speech was as follows 
i am aware romans that the qualities which men show in their behavior after election are very different from those with which they sought your suffrages and that the energetic humble and unambitious character of their previous life is then changed for sloth and insolence my views however are very different from theirs for in proportion as the state as a whole exceeds the consulship and praetorship in importance by so much ought our diligence in its government to exceed that with which we seek these offices i am not insensible to the greatness of the burden which by your distinguished favor i have to bear to prepare for war without straining the treasury to press into service men whom one is unwilling to offend to superintend every detail at home and abroad and to do all this amid the jealousy of hostile intriguers is harder romans than can be conceived again if others commit an error their ancient family the brave deeds of their ancestors the wealth of their kinsmen and connections and troops of clients are all at hand to defend them i have to place my whole hopes in my own person i must needs protect them by my merit and integrity for i have no other help in which i can trust i understand too romans that the eyes of all men are upon me and that while inasmuch as my services advance the state fair and honest men are in my favor the nobility are seeking some point of attack i must therefore strive with greater energy both that you may not be deceived in me and that your enemies may be disappointed my life from boyhood to the present day has been such as to make me familiar with every toil and danger nor romans do i intend now that i have received my reward to abandon the course of conduct which previously to your kindness i voluntarily pursued men who in their desire for popularity have assumed the mask of virtue find it hard to restrain themselves when in power i who have passed my whole life in the most honorable pursuits now find that uprightness has passed from habit into nature you have commanded me to conduct the war with jugurtha and at this the nobility have taken deep offense consider i pray you whether it would be a change for the better were you to dispatch either on this or on any like commission some member of that ring of nobles some scion of an ancient house who could boast of the effigies of his many ancestors but of never a campaign and allow him on an affair of this importance to hurry and bustle about in his utter ignorance and take some man of the people to instruct him in his duty for i assure you it is nothing uncommon for the man to whom you have given command to look to some others for his orders i myself romans have known cases of consuls who after their election have begun to read the old chronicles and the greek manuals of warfare men these who begin at the wrong end for though the conduct of wars follows the appointment to them in the order of time in the order of nature and experience it precedes it with these proud ones romans compare me the self-made man the things of which they are wont to hear or read i have either seen or have myself performed and the knowledge which they get from books i have acquired by active service i leave it to you to consider whether deeds or maxims are the more important they despise my lack of family i their cowardice in my teeth men cast my fortune in theirs their infamous deeds for my own part i think that all men have one common nature and that it is the bravest who are the noblest if to the fathers of albinus or bestia the question could now be put whether they would prefer me or them as their descendants what other answers think you they would return than that they wish to have the best for their children again if these men are right in despising me let them do the same to their ancestors whose nobility like my own sprang from their merit they are jealous of the dignity conferred on me why are they not jealous of my energy my integrity yes and of my dangers since it is by these that i have gained it rotten with pride they pass their days as if they despise the dignities you can confer yet they demand them with the air of men who have lived an honorable life surely they are deceived who thus hope to unite the two things of all others the most oppose the pleasure namely of sloth and the rewards of merit again in their speeches before yourselves or the senate the greater part of their harangue is a eulogy of their ancestors 
for they think by dwelling on their brave deeds to increase their own reputation yet the very reverse often is the result for the nobler the life of their ancestors the more shameful is their own sloth indeed the glory of forefathers is really to their descendants as a burning light which allows neither their good deeds nor their bad to remain unnoticed i confess romans i have nothing of this kind but i have something which is far nobler the power namely to tell of doings of my own see then the unfairness of these men the privileges which they claim for themselves in right of another's merit they do not allow me in right of my own and this because i have no effigies of ancestors to show and because the nobility i have is a thing of to-day yet surely to have one nobility is better than to have received and shamed it i am aware that my enemies should they wish to answer will be at no loss for an eloquent and studied reply now however that i am so favored by you they attack me on every occasion and i have therefore chosen not to remain silent lest my self-restraint should be mistaken for consciousness of guilt for myself indeed i say it from my heart no speech can hurt me truth can speak no otherwise than favorably falsehood is foiled by the evidence of my life and character they impugn however your policy in assigning me so high an office and so weighty a task and so i ask you again and again to consider whether you ought really to repent it to inspire your trust i have no statues triumphs or consulships of my ancestors to which to point but if need be i can show spears a standard medals and other prizes soldiers earn and scars dealt full upon my breast these are my statues these my title to nobility and one which was not left me as a bequest as in the case of my enemies but which i won for myself by my many toils and dangers my words have no studied grace of that i think little merit needs no help to display it though my enemies must use their tricks of rhetoric to conceal their base deeds behind a mass of words again i have learnt no greek i was not anxious to gain a knowledge which had done nothing to help its teachers in pursuit of virtue in the knowledge however which is far the most important for the state i am a master to strike the foe to keep good watch to fear nothing save disgrace to bear heat and cold with equal patience to make my bed on the ground to undergo toil and hunger together all this i know and with this teaching i shall exhort my soldiers nor will i treat them with stringency myself with indulgence nor claim the glory and leave them the toil to refrain from such conduct is to rule with efficiency and moderation to live in luxury yourself while you coerce your army by punishments is to act the tyrant not the general by such conduct as i have praised your ancestors won renown for themselves and the state in reliance on their glory and nobility their very opposite in character now scorns us who emulate these men of old and claims of you every post of honor not for any service rendered but simply as its due truly these arrogant nobles make a deep mistake their ancestors left them everything that could be left wealth pedigree and their own glorious memory their merit they did not and could not bequeath them that alone is neither given nor received they call me mean and unpolished because i am no adept at tricking out a feast keep no actor no cook more highly paid than my bailiff romans i am proud to confess such conduct the lesson i learnt from my father and other pious men was that graces befitted a woman toil a man and that the good should be always richer in glory than in wealth arms not ornaments are the true honours let the nobles then continue to follow the course they delight in and prize let them live and drink in the scenes of rivalry where they spent their youth there let them pass their old age the slaves of their belly and their lust and the sweat and dust and the like let them lead to us who find more joy in them than in the feast but this they will not do when they have disgraced themselves with every crime these vilest of men come to seize the prizes of the good in defiance of all justice those outrageous vices luxury and sloth are no obstacle to the men who practise them while they are the destruction of the guiltless state 
i have answered my enemies with a brevity which suits my own character better than such a theme as their misconduct i will now say a few words on public affairs in the first place romans be of good heart as regards numidia hitherto jugurtha has been protected by the avarice unskilfulness and arrogance of your generals and all these you have now removed in the second place you have an army there acquainted with the country but i profess more vigorous than fortunate for a great part of it has been wasted away by the corruption or rashness of your commanders i ask such of you therefore as are of military age to join your efforts with mine and protect the state let no one take alarm from the misfortunes of others or from the arrogance of generals i shall be with you in person on the march and in the field at once to consult your interests and to share your dangers i shall treat you in all respects the same as myself and with the help of the gods victory booty renowned are all ready to our hand even were they doubtful or distant it would be yet the duty of every honest man to support the state cowardice never yet gained a man immortality nor has any parent yet asked for his children that they might exist for ever they ask that they may live out their life in uprightness and honor romans i would say more could words inspire the timid with courage for the brave man i think i have said fully enough end of Ugerthine war part nine